Well, welcome once again. Let's get the college football season underway. Well, we can't yet, but that's going to happen September 2nd. But it's time to start getting serious about our conversations. And Coach Gundy is here. How do you like your team? What do you, what do you think? It's different, isn't it? Yeah, it, it's different with all the new players. But I like their chemistry. You and I were talking, you know, their work ethic. Uh, it's been really good over the last month. As always, when we get to this point, we're excited to play and really find out kind of who we are and where we're at depth chart-wise. Um, we'll play more players during the game than ever before. Um, with all the new players that we've had that come in, we almost feel like we have to get them out in the games to, to kind of evaluate them. Practice is one thing, but games is another. So it's a little different than it used to be, but we're excited about getting ready to play. As far as the implementation of a new defensive scheme, mm -hmm. a lot of changes on offense, how's that gone? And where are you in that process in terms of being game ready? I, I think we're going to be game ready. Um, I tied the coordinators down pretty good a couple weeks ago. Uh, to minimize what we're trying to get accomplished. When you watch each other compete offense and defensively against each other, sometimes it's hard to tell how good you are at, in any of the areas Yeah, because they're going against the same guys every day. I feel like that um, we'll be a better running football team this year, which is important, and I feel like we have a fast defense. Those are two things that I'm pretty sure about at this time. As far as the offense is concerned, how much different will it be? And when I say that, you talked a lot about going under center, tight ends, fullbacks, et cetera. Will it be a week-by-week -week thing, how much we see that? Do you have a feel for how, just how much you might utilize those packages? Um, it'll be week-by-week, week, and as we ease into some of it, we'll see how good we are at it. Sure. You know, we have to be able to use what we think gives us the best chance to move the ball and score points. I think the best way to put it now is we have some of those things available if we want to use them. Last year, they weren't available. Sure, sure. Quarterback-wise, there was one season in particular where you played two guys the entire season. It's 2015 with Mason Rudolph and J.W. Walsh, two very different player skill set-wise. You started 10-0 and 0 mm -hmm. and uh, had a fantastic year. Now you obviously have, you know, you not only have two, you have three that have performed well in the preseason do you feel like because of the portal and the way college football has changed, the possibility of playing two that are fairly similar skill set wise is a realistic possibility and maybe just sort of how you do business now? Is that, is that true? I think there's some truth to that. Um, if we had a clear starter, a guy that has separated himself, we would name that, that uh, young man the starter. We have more than one quarterback that I think gives us a chance to win games. Every other position on the field, we play multiple guys per position. The quarterback is the one position where most teams play one guy. Because of the new transfer portal and the way things are handled, um, we have guys that we don't know much about them. We have guys that we think have talent that bring something to our team, but they might not have played in two years. Yeah. And I just think that we're in a time where there's going to be more players get in the game and play up through the first three or four or five games in a year. Now, at that time, it might separate itself. So a little bit of it is the new part of college football, and then the other side of it at that particular position is that we feel like we have more than one guy that can help us win games. This is a hard question, but having watched preseason camp, I, I, I feel like I, I need to ask it. Could the linebackers be a position group that is considerably better than people might have imagined going in? It looks like the linebackers have had a yeah. really good preseason. We have more depth at the linebacker position with experience than we've had. So, obviously, Devin Harper was a good player when he was here with Malcolm, but oh, Devin yeah. didn't play very much. Right. Malcolm was a, a unique athlete in that he could play the entire game. So, we have mature guys now. Benson's coming back. He's played a lot of football. I think he's playing a really high level right now. We have one of our portal guys, 
Justin Wright that's coming over from Tulsa that's played a lot of football, but not here. Right. He's an experienced player. And then you have a guy like Nick Martin who's up and coming in our program and then hasn't played much. That's just an example of, you know, three guys that fit what we're talking about and trying to find out what these guys can do. But to answer your question, we have more linebackers available, and that's not counting the outside guys, than, than we've had in the past. And I think that's what makes our that position look stronger because in, in the past we've had – up front guys that played pretty good, but behind them, we didn't have much experience. And it's a little different now. And it looks like that Colin Oliver's transition to what I guess really would be a hybrid linebacker defensive end role, that, that seems to be going pretty well. He's doing really well. Um, his body structure, his um, weight, his athleticism really fits this concept. He's another player that I'm excited about watching in all the different spots that he can be. You know, he can play in the box. He can play out of the box. He can play on the line of scrimmage. He can do a lot of different things. So I'm excited about watching him play and see how he develops at that position. Final question before we wrap up this segment, and then we'll have some highlights coming up in the next segment. You've won so big for so long. Mm -hmm. You look at the last 15 years, you've had five times where you've finished with eight wins or less. You know, in many cases, eight wins is a really good year. But here's the deal. In four of those seasons, you have spent much of the next season ranked in the top ten, in some cases the top five. Mm -hmm. Number one, why do you feel like you've had the ability to consistently bounce back? And is there a part of you that sometimes really thrives when people say, oh, they're down, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, and then you jump right back up and you're really, really good? Well, first off, we don't really change a lot with our culture and what we believe in. We don't get too far out of our box. I think some people, not only coaches, but in the professional world, if they're not having as much success as they maybe somebody thought they should have, they try to make a change. And I think when you have an organization as big as this, changes um, should be very minimal. So we're gonna, we'll tinker with the offense and defense and special teams, but our culture, the development in the offseason with Rob Glass, hopefully our discipline and toughness, that's going to stay really consistent. I believe young men need consistency, and they want to be shown the way. So if we continue to show them multiple paths of how to get to the finish line, sometimes they can doubt that. So we stay the course on what we believe in, and I think our players ultimately believe and they see that. And they realize there will be times when – maybe injuries, maybe team chemistry, or we don't play as well. But then we can rally back if we just stay the course and trust the system. And fortunately, I've been here almost 20 years now, and so it's easy to look back and see the illustration of the system, and it works. And I think players believe that. It is time for What's Your Beef. It's brought to you by Old Trapper Beef Jerky. You can see the quality through the clear packaging and good stuff and all kinds of different flavors as well. A different flavor this year uh, that we're going to bite off, so to speak, is new clock rules, mm -hmm. significant changes, clock running after first downs. How different do you think it will be? How drastic could the impact be on college football? And, and does it change how you, for lack of a better description, manage the game? I think it's going to be a bigger adjustment than what maybe I've heard opinions across the country from the standpoint that in college football, a number of teams could be down 15 or 20 points halfway through the second quarter, even sometimes early in the third quarter, and the game's not over. We've been ahead by 15 or 20, and we're involved in nail biters right up till the end, and we've been behind by 15 and 20 and won those games. So that's been a big part of college football. With the clock running now on first downs, the game is going to move along so much faster, in my opinion, that – Falling behind two to three touchdowns may be considerably more difficult to play catch-up. That's where the run game fits in. Not only do we need to rush the ball better for a variety of reasons, but if you have a lead and you get into a fourth quarter and you can run the football and just get a couple first downs, even if you punt, 
by the time the other team gets the ball, whether they score or not, you're going to see a considerable difference in you might only have to have two possessions instead of four possessions to end the game. So I think it's going to be a big change in college football. Okay, just to follow up, and, and this is a little bit off the wall, but could it change even how you approach early in the game? And when I say that, less possessions, less opportunities to score, will there be some coaches that think, hey, we better let's take some deep shots. Let's see if we can get a cheap one because playing with the lead is going to matter more now than it ever has before. You just don't get as many chances. Yeah, I, I think so. And, you know, you, in most cases, offensively, we were getting around 14 possessions a game, but we played fast. Mm-hmm. Um, we might only get 11 possessions a game now. Wow, that's a big change. Uh, so when you think about it from a math standpoint, let's just say 12. If you have 12 possessions, they get 12 possessions. Then – now turnovers and big plays become a factor. So if you're plus two in the turnover, that means I get 14 possessions, you get 10. So unless you're a lot better than me, percentages are I'm going to beat you because I get four more possessions than you do. And if somehow I hit a couple big plays in the game and or unfortunately if they hit us on them, it's going to factor in because now you're playing catch up. And there's just not enough possessions in the game to keep flipping it over. So I think it's, it's, a, it's a pretty significant change in our game. Looking forward to the season opener, and we'll have our next show for you coming up prior to week two at Arizona State. We look forward to talking with you then.